Are you bored out of your mind from the meta picks? And what about underrated champions that are way stronger than you think? And with this, welcome back to another Pro Guards Wild Drift video. And let's just start with our first champion on this list. And here we have Misfortune, an AD carry that has been forgotten for I don't know what reason. We have seen Kai'Sa dominate this scene for too long already. So what about other alternatives we can pick up that impact the game in a positive manner similar to Kai'Sa? But with this, I don't mean that Kai'Sa is unplayable, she will still remain the top tier AD carry for solo queue in any scenario. But we want to leave this scope and look for other champions that are strong. And here we have Misfortune. And Misfortune starts popping off during the laning phase. She's an absolute lane bully and annoying to deal with in any scenario for any kind of champion. And the reason for that is the bounce on her first ability. Because it's straight up not fair. It defies any logic, geometry and anything you can think of. And not only that, it also deals a ton of damage. And if you're familiar with the second and first ability and how the passive ability of her works, you can do some fancy stuff. Whenever you hit a target with your passive, you gain a cooldown reduction of your second ability. Now, if you apply your first ability to a target and it bounces to another champion, it applies the passive of yours to the first and the second target, which means the first target is reset again, which means you're able to instantly reapply your bonus passive damage on the first target again, which accumulates to an instant cooldown reset of 6 seconds on your second ability. And if you now take into consideration that you might buy a charge blade at some point, most likely second after mana mune, you will have permanent uptime of this ability. And the passive attack speed you gain from this ability is nothing to joke about. It's from 30% to 90% bonus attack speed, and you will have constant uptime if you are able to attack the enemy. And here's another thing that is quite broken about this pick. Whatever state the game is in, MF can still remain useful by providing utility and zone control via her third and ultimate ability. All she has to do for that is paying attention to how the fight is developing. However, exactly this might not be the easiest to do for most players. Because they have to leave the scope of their locked camera and look at the fight and how it really is going to play out. You have to have a certain foresight and the ability to calculate what is going to happen next to make this champion really strong. But your champion's damage starts becoming really wild once you completed or upgraded the mana mune and have the charge by in the inventory. Because of the way your champion works now and the cooldowns you have, which are relatively low, you get a lot of charge blade procs and a lot of bonus damage. And thanks to the cooldown reduction from the mana mune and the charge blade, you'll have your spells so many times that you can alternate between charge blade procs without a problem, which yet again is another DPS increase. And once we get into the territory in which you can build Cyrilda, well, your utility and damage become massive. However, you still have to be careful about champions that can jump you because that is the thing that MF struggles with the most. Because her isolated damage compared to Kai'Sa in the vein isn't nearly as strong. But her direct impact on a teamfight, if she is given the ability to do so, is obscene. And snowballing with this champion, especially with a strong laning phase, is something that is not the hardest to do. And by the way, are you already subscribed to the channel? No? Then what are you waiting for? We are making sure to provide you with the best content you can ask for and to get you to the next level of gameplay with those guides. And with that out of the way, let's move on to our question of the day. What is your favorite underrated champion this patch and why? Let me know in the comments below. And the next champion on our list is Singed. Yes, you've heard it right, Singed is absolutely underrated as a champion. Once Singed leaves lane, he becomes super strong as he's able to deal damage to all of his enemies at the same time while providing a lot of utility. Similar to MF if you think about that. At least from a utility point of view. However, in lane, Singed is one of the weakest champions, but there's one thing you can do to stop that from holding you back. Number one, don't leash for your jungle. If you do so, you'll relinquish all rights to agency in lane. You simply cannot play. Well, and if Singed cannot play during the laning phase, he's going to have a hard time from that point on. However, if he has access to the very first wave and is allowed to push it very fast, thanks to the help of the Amplifying 2 minus first ability, he can actually win lane. Or rather, he's unable to die during the laning phase. Because once he gains access to level 2 and his fling ability, no champion in the game, if he uses that spell smart, can kill him. And as we reach territories in which he has access to his Rylai's Crystal Scepter, it becomes very hard for the enemy team to play. Especially if the enemy team wants to go into his team, Singe becomes a scary asset as he leaves behind a poisonous trail. 
and with Rylize this poisonous trap is slowing the entire enemy team. And if he already built other AP items, it's going to deal a lot of damage. So as the game goes on, Singe turns from a tickle fiend during laning phase into an actual DPS monster during teamfights. And if that isn't all, thanks to his ultimate ability he gains a lot of resistances which make him a lot tankier. Because you have to consider one additional thing. All AP items he's going to build feature HP, which means they get a lot more effective with his ultimate ability's resistances, which make him yet again in return super tanky, while dealing a lot of damage in return. But now let's move on to our next pick. And now we have Evelyn. Evelyn used to dominate every single game she was in. She was the most broken pick in jungle and the most broken pick in certain lanes until she was nerfed heavily. However, there's a few things about Evelyn that still make her stronger than you might expect she is. For number one, Evelyn's jungle clear is still fast. Nonetheless, her early game is on the weaker end of the spectrum. So you have to take extra care and avoid early skirmishes if the enemy champion has a superior 1v1 pick. So for example, a Lee Sin can really get you killed. But if the Lee Sin misses his first ability, you can run him down because your first ability has no real cooldown. But this is just a rare case, which usually doesn't really happen. However, you're not really weak once you get access to all your normal abilities. And if the enemy misses one of their abilities, you're able to punish them quite easily. Because here's the weird thing about Evelyn in the early game. You have a lot of DPS thanks to your first ability's low cooldown. However, yet again, you can't really compete to the early meta junglers in terms of damage unless they make a mistake. Which means, you cannot really expect them to make a mistake, so it would be foolish of you to think they would. So rather, go for the consistent approach and farm up to level 5 and then influence the map. Because once you start snowballing, things become very fun. And snowballing with this pick isn't the hardest because, well, you're invisible once you hit level 5. And people tend to forget about that. Which means easy kills and easy snowball for you, especially due to the fact that this champion isn't played anymore. And the next pick also has left the scene for quite some while. However, with the current uprising of Renekton, he might find his way back into the game thanks to his sturdiness. Because if there's one pick in the game Renekton struggles into, it's the Garen. Because Renekton can't just build Blade of the Rune King into the Garen and snowball throughout the game. Because if he does so, the Garen is going to just kill him. It sounds quite crazy, but the Garen doesn't even need damage items to do so. All he needs is some armor and health and then the Renekton is going to have a very bad time. Which in return forces the Renekton to go Black Cleaver early, so his snowball potential is rather limited. At least in the isolated 1v1 scenario. Another thing that is quite nice about Garen is that in lane it's very hard to get rid of Garen. He is super sturdy and nearly impossible to dive if he itemizes properly. If you've seen competitive, you might have seen some cases in which the Garen rushes Boots and the Gargoyle Enchant. With those things, he's literally unkillable. Have you ever tried to kill a Garen with those items? It doesn't happen. And other than that, he can just itemize some armor, maybe a Sunfire Cape, and then maybe a Black Cleaver to put emphasis on his utility in a teamfight scenario. So his teammates benefit from his sturdiness a bit more. But in theory, it's impossible for the Garen to die in the 1v1 unless he wants to die. The region of his passive is just too insane and thanks to his mobility on the map, thanks to his first ability and his overall speed and tankiness, he becomes quite annoying to deal with. And if that wasn't it already, if you see him yeet after you with his ultimate ability, don't try to flash away. It's going to kill you anyway. And if you flash over a wall, he's going to jump after you with his ult. And then if you think you survived, well, you're going to get killed. And if your allies are waiting on the other side and are also low, well, you just got them killed. Which usually ends up in a lot of flame from your teammates, which you might understand. But now we move on to the last pick of this list. And this is a newer champion, which has released just recently, but people still struggle to play him, so he's kind of underrated because people have a lot of issues with executing his skill set. And with that, let's just start with his greatest asset, his cage, and therefore his ability to determine the playing field of skirmishes and teamfights. So for starters, this ability is his strongest ability in the game. So why not max it second? What else do you need? Your pick isn't necessarily centered around damage spells and damage itemization. Because, now think about the second thing. Vyga infinitely scales into the later stages of the game. So especially during the mid game where a lot of skirmishes happen, he gains an absurd amount of AP from just hitting enemies with his spells. So number one, the more cooldown reduction he has, the better. Number two, the more likely he is to hit enemies with his spells, the stronger he becomes. So rather than building an Archangel into another full damage item, what about an item that grants us utility? 
maybe movement speed which makes it easier for us to hit the enemy with a cage. Because once they're hit with a cage, they have to use a summoner spell because if they don't leave the cage, it's very likely for them to just die. And if you follow that train of thought, it's going to repeat itself multiple times during a game. Especially if you hit the later stages of the game, one single cage can determine the fight. Even if you don't hit somebody, you just cage in somebody or you determine the playing field. The enemy will suffer from this a lot. And whatever you're building, you're still getting a lot of AP from just a passive alone. But thinking about this, eventually you want the rabbit on staff cap, because it's just too good with your champion. But there's also something you need to think about. In some cases in which the enemy doesn't have any MR and you're snowballing heavily, what about building a Lich Bane? I know it sounds kinda troll, but in certain scenarios it really carries you games. Because the damage you gain from this item, thanks to the high AP values you have, really can make the difference especially if you're facing tankier targets. And on a side note, it also helps you hitting towers because you literally two-shot them. And that wraps up today's video. Thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and see you tomorrow.